So to back to the armpit situation that yeah. we were just talking about. <laughs> so, so like I, I did, I didn't know this, but someone pointed because I everybody knows that I'm a diehard Swifty. But someone pointed out that um, Taylor Swift has her own Reddit dedicated to how sexy her armpits are. What? Yeah. So it's just like this huge group of people who just like post pictures of Taylor Swift's armpits, and I guess jerk off to him. I have no idea. So I guess. Well, I have a lot of a lot of questions. Sure. Um, but the the first and the one that's like pressing the most to me is um what about the armpits is it? Like are they extraordinarily smooth? Is it a shape thing? Like She has some nice armpits. I was looking at the pictures and they're <laughs> if you google Taylor Swift armpits and you look Which at I them Which I am doing. Yeah, obviously. unfortunately, we're we're all doing this. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it at home. Okay, you know what? <laughs> you know what? You're right. And she I don't know why it. she she does. Wow. Those, yeah, those are nice. Okay, I get it. I get it. I'm not going to say that I'm like an armpit guy or anything. Right. But if but I, I were, it. I would be so hard right now. Yeah. At Taylor Swift's armpits. <laughs> yeah, they're it's, like, they're good. I, I don't know. Are they remarkable? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, she's huh. just such an angular person I, yeah I, it's hard to not have nice armpits when you have like probably a really rigorous skincare routine great diet and are that pointy yeah <laughs> she is really pointy like mm-hmm. yeah for sure she She's a she's a mathematician's delight of a woman, I think we could say. <laughs> so many right angles. <laughs> yeah, I think if um I know uh Margot Rob Robbie is playing um Barbie, but like mm-hmm. I think she does have sort of the 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 Barbie ideal. Yeah. Wait, Margot Robbie bit. is playing Barbie? Yep. Wait, wait, is there like a Barbie movie or a show yes. or Yes, uh, Amy Schumer is no longer. <laughs> it's <laughs> going through what? a lot of. So over the years, there's been a Barbie movie like in like in. People have been in talks for Barbie movies for quite some time, but I think it's actually happening now. It's uh, Greta Gerwig is directing it. Okay. And it's got Margot Ro- Robbie and fucking I don't remember who else. Like, it seems like it might be okay, but. At one point, it was going to be like Amy Schumer. Oh no, that sounds awful. Well, that's it was good. a bizarre reflection of of pop culture at the time. <laughs> oh wow! Well, I'm glad that they didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, Honestly, I feel like Margot God. Robbie has better comedic timing than Amy Schumer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's perfect. Like, okay, sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> and I will say, I think a lot of people are going to think that most people hate Amy Schumer because she's she's ugly and unpleasant to look at. And that's just simply not the case. Most people hate Amy Schumer because she sucks and is unfunny and unpleasant to witness as a human. Yeah. Uh, what a, like, I, would hate, I would hate Amy Schumer just as much even if I were blind. Yeah. <laughs> I would hate her just as much or... I might hate her more if she looked like Margot Robbie, actually. Oh, that would be so like, much worse. Then I'd be like, who does she think she is? You know? Because <laughs> yeah. like, it's at like. Least she's, like a, she's like a fairly like normal looking person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just like she she gets a certain allowance of like being an asshole, I think. Yeah. Um, but not the amount, you know, you give 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 a mouse a cookie or. Uh, give a mouth an ucky cookie. <laughs> they'll, they'll do it. They'll be, do a fucking hour on it. You can't be like extremely hot and a dick. Like it's just too much. Like yeah. you. And honestly, although like I have heard people go the other way where they're like, oh, like if you're unattractive, you have to like be really nice or whatever mm-hmm. to like make up for it. And I don't think that's true. I think that's like life's way of giving you like, well, you know. You can't have everything, but right. since you're like, since you're like a, a six, you can like, 
kind of get snippy with a customer service hold person like sometimes <laughs> it's like it's yeah. it's the balance of the universe <laughs> right i think i think there's like a trifecta there's smart um smart hot and funny and yeah. you can't mm-hmm. you can't have all of it like that's right. oh and nice and nice that's a quad quadfactra <laughs> um but yeah you can't have all of them you got to be lacking in at least one of them it's like a panera you pick two yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's not a four for four you can't afford no. it for them <laughs> to say though so thinking about margot robbie being cast as barbie i get it like surface wise i get it you know she's thin she's blonde she's tall blue eyes she's just hot obviously Mm -hmm. um but i think that someone like taylor swift almost would have been a better choice for barbie barbie to me is pretty she's hot but she's like horse girl pretty americana girl next door pretty whereas like she doesn't really get jokes pretty Yes, yes, absolutely. She went to youth group way longer than everybody else did, you know? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> whereas Margot Robbie is more like va va voom, sex pot, you know? Very and that's conventionally not what attractive, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Barbie, I mean, Barbie babysat her little sister who was named Skipper. Like, they lived in a trailer <laughs> park for a while, for mm-hmm. sure, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It should have been. It should have been Taylor, and yeah, that's what that's what we need to do now is ruin this for for Margot Robbie. <laughs> yeah, it really just comes down to like who can you see wearing like a tennis skirt and Keds, and Margot Robbie isn't that to me. <laughs> Taylor Swift does that every day. Like, she exactly. does yeah. that. That's I, part of the, yeah, that's part of her morning routine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if, like, you Google satellite viewed uh, Taylor Swift's home right now, she's in there. She's got her kids up on the couch. She's watching toddlers and tiaras, and that's Barbie. Oh, yeah, with all her seven cats or whatever, because she's, like, a weird cat girl. (laughs) That is my favorite, like, tiny bit of Taylor Swift lore that I know is that she's a huge cat girl. I think that rocks. (laughs) We love that. We love that. And, uh, you know... I think this is a good time to, to you know, to welcome. Uh, how do we usually do this? Um, do welcome anything. to the suck. Uh, the 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 second uh, for the dolls uh, edition. <laughs> um, we are. It's it's uh it's it's Justine. It's Ashley. It's Willow. We're here. We're talking. We're gossiping. <laughs> we are. Uh, we're sharing hair ties. <laughs> yeah. We are we are we are furious that Kim Kardashian should we get into uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Kim Kardashian wearing a Marilyn Monroe's uh, dress to the So why why are people mad about it? That's what I don't understand. Because, because she's not it, white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, th- okay. I think the, the thing that they're getting behind it is like, oh, well, it was it's a historical piece of fashion that should have like remained in the museum um, and like that Kim putting it on and wearing it because Kim like didn't fit it extremely well. It, it you know, she probably stretched it a little bit. Um, they're like upset that it was like disrespecting a piece of history and that it should have stayed in the museum to be preserved, which like, OK, everyone's ignoring, though. This thing wasn't in the fucking Met. It was in the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Orlando, <laughs> <Yeah>. Florida. Yep. <laughs> Present my homeland. Hell yeah. 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 Um, so it's like, okay, all right. She, she, she Calm down. <laughs> well, and that's the thing, too, because I was reading about the process of it, and they gave her a replica to try on, mm-hmm. and uh, she didn't quite fit in it, so she went on a diet and lost a bunch of weight. And then they had like the conservationists from Ripley's there to put it on her. She only wore it for like a little bit. And then they like gently peeled it off of her and then put her in a replica. 
So like, I don't really like, she's a rich person. Nothing happened to the yeah. dress. The dress is fine. Yeah. Man. Oh, people, people said that some of the diamonds fell off or the rhinestones or whatever. <laughs> the horny okay. JFK dress who gives yeah. a fuck. And that's literally, that is the, that's the dress. That's the one time that Marilyn wore it was to wear, to where was to sing happy birthday, Mr. President. Um, in front of his wife, by the way, I think that's a yeah. really neat little fact about that specific mm-hmm. uh, moment she, in time was that his wife was just like, you just, she just had to sit there and like watch that. Yeah. And like, he got around for sure. And like, there's no oh. way she didn't know that uh, he was fucking Monroe, but Monroe had that picturing. dress. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I was saying she was picture she was picturing the, you know. Yeah. And then it happened. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, Monroe <laughs> had that dress sewn on her skin ass tight to sing yeah. that song all hornily for his birthday yeah. in front of his wife. And I'm like, damn, that's some brutal shit, man. <laughs> yeah, also, dude. this this might be kind of a hot take, um, but I've like heard the recording and stuff. It's kind of mid. It's really yeah. bad. <laughs> like, it's, it's very bad. Yeah, no, but it was it was just it was just horny. It was just all all like just mm-hmm. lusty. Yeah. That's all it, it was. was. Like, it was the it was the most recent uh Kim Petrus uh <laughs> it was on the the EP. Um I yeah, you heard it here first, folks. Uh Marilyn Monroe was mid. <sighs> well, I I don't <laughs> Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> the song, the just, song she sang was very midly yeah. sang. Yeah. <laughs> it was sung midly. Um, yeah. it, it reminds me so much. All I could think of, um, if you've seen Mad Men, the scene where Megan sings Zooby Zoo. I hated that. Uh, <laughs> in front of all of his coworkers in um, that really horny way. It's that, but like worse and uh also of everybody. not his wife yeah um really like it bad. was embarrassing enough when it was like megan being uh don's wife doing it but then just being like th- clearly the other woman in front of the guy's wife that's so much worse yeah dude and and you know to disrespect that dress <laughs> know, really by yeah. by wearing it years later and looking Fucking spectacular in it, honestly. Yeah. yeah. She, looks, she looks fucking great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I just, I understand. I, I you know, I, I think, like, I understand the idea of, of, you know, preserving historical things. But, like, this is, this is definitely a case of, like, you are, you're insisting on, on letting uh, the past sort of just fill up all the space everywhere. And yeah. Until, you know everybody's crammed into one little corner of the, the world or whatever, you know, cause you've got these warehouses full of fucking dresses that, that Marilyn Monroe wore or, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's just, it's it, fucking Jay, Jay Leno's gar- uh, garages full of cars or whatever. I understand that things have historical value, but that's, I, I really don't think this is something that, that people are, should actually be angry about. No, not at all. Right. Also, there's so many even, other things right now. Even like, yeah, man, <laughs> Marilyn. Same night. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the exact same night. Um, I was just gonna say Marilyn's like white dress, the you know the the steam, the famous white a line dress. That's at the museum too. It's fine. We have enough Marilyn dresses. The woman yeah. wore a lot of dresses. <laughs> that was the I didn't even see this before. That's the dress I was assuming it was, which would be like mm-hmm. maybe more understandable to be upset about yeah. because that's so iconic, but like Yeah. No. Yeah. Honestly, if you had told me like 4 days ago to be like, hey, or like if you asked me, like, what dress did Marilyn Monroe wear to sing the horniest happy birthday song you've ever heard <laughs> to the president of the United States in front of his mortified wife, what dress was that? I would have no idea what the fuck you were talking about. Exactly. Like, I don't know. I didn't know what that dress looked like. <laughs> And now um, I do. So this yeah. has been an education, yeah. you know? Yeah. You've learned. This was for awareness of the dress. <laughs> yeah. Right. Rather, it, it, sh- <laughs> it should be on a modern day, like, sort of 
I don't want to call anybody an equivalent to Marilyn Monroe. That's not what I mean. Like, I'm, no. But you know but, what I mean. It's like, like a, a, media, pers- a media icon, socialist, or socialist, socialite. Fuck, you know, <laughs> a socialist like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Oh she yeah. Says, no one wants to work for the people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to work without the representation of a strong union anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Oh, but yeah, I, I do think that's more useful than it sitting in fucking Yeah. And like Ripley's- she's it's fine. The dress is fine. It, it still exists. It's not like she set it on fire or something. How yeah. punk rock would it have been, though? <laughs> I know. I would, I would have liked her more. Because yeah. yeah. um, the, the Met Gala, which, by the way, I am kind of confused. Like, my only issue at all with the dress wearing, wasn't this theme Gilded Age, which is like late 1800s? <laughs> mm. So what the hell was she it's wearing just... the dress for? It was, is it just because it was like gold? Was that she? She, just, she yeah, explained yeah. it. She was just like, "What's more American than Marilyn Monroe's dress?" And I'm like, I don't think the theme was America. Well, what's it... more gilded than America? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I love that for her. Just to receive a theme and be like, no, cool. So instead, (laughs) (laughs) I, yeah, that rocks. Good job, Kim. Uh, A plus. Yeah, she's working her way back into my good graces after that awful, awful shit she said. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just do more dumb shit with dresses. Uh, That's all it's going to take to get me back on board. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How do we? How do we, I? What, what do we do without our shepherd? I miss you, Phil. Speaking of, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, uh, uh, getting back into our good graces, Dave, Dave, Chappelle. Dave <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a thing that he is doing always. I mean, well. I will say at the moment, because of what's happening, I I, I feel you know more for him than I did they did um but true should we talk about that I think we should yeah probably get into this um yeah. you're gonna have talking to, about the- you're gonna have to give it to me um because I I honestly I've just been playing God of War I don't know what happened at all in the world <laughs> I was impressed when you didn't yeah that that you were you were in the dark about this um so and, and this is I am reading exclusively i believe from new york post articles the the paragon of uh journalistic integrity um that we all look to when we need to know um you know what we as uh snide white people uh, should be (laughs) thinking about about the the issues but yeah dave Chappelle uh during the la something yeah, it was it was it was it was at the Hollywood Bowl. I think it was the Netflix is a joke fest, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he was, you know, during his set, he was um, tackled. He was almost tackled. <laughs> this, this dude r- r- ran up on stage. Isaiah Lee uh, ran up on stage and tried to tackle him. Um, you know, the, the guy was, you know, wrangled by security and brought backstage. And, uh, you know, Chappelle came back out and joked that they beat him up or whatever. And they they did beat him up. Um, There is a photo of him with his arm twisted halfway around, which seems a little excessive to me. But yeah, really fucking stupid thing to do. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But this is, of course, set off this this insane conversation um, about, uh, you know, how how you know, you can't say anything anymore. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's like somebody has thrown just a satchel of, of, of meat (laughs) to these dudes that love to just go on. And, you know, apropos of nothing, we'll just be like, well, you can't say anything anymore. It's just like, that's their, uh, (laughs) talking about the weather now. So now they actually have fuel. Um, because this 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 fucking rat this this guy that that is a rapper I guess 
who has a song called Dave Chappelle where he talks about the Hollywood Bowl was like trying to live out some sort of his like album. vision. Yeah, from two years ago that I'm that assuming rocks maybe a so couple much. hundred people listen to. Well, I, I I don't feel for Chappelle and I never will because he was <laughs> He he was also like before the show. He was just like, yeah, we gotta we gotta boost up security because all this backlash and like cancel culture and like I'm afraid for like my life and my wife is afraid for me and like all this fucking bullshit because of <laughs> and um and then he was like, not only did he joke about that dude getting his ass kicked, but he was also just like, I bet that was a trans man. So like, fuck Dave Chappelle. I'm glad. Yeah. I oh, wish it was cool. worse. But, um, <laughs> Uh, I he wish could have, yeah, he could have dealt with that with much weird. more gracefully. I, I wish he, he did <laughs> not, not do fatal harm, but I wish he did reach him at least with this weird replica gun. Yeah, uh, it's weird, right? Yeah. That yeah, it, seems it has a, like he it can shoot a knife, a knife out of it. it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I'm, I'm very pleased to learn that tackling or almost tackling comedians is only a misdemeanor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just putting that out there for everybody to know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if anybody is making, uh, you know, uh, Chappelle derivative jokes about how you'd, you'd, you know, your preferences as to what you'd, as to what and who you'd like to be in your bathrooms. Uh, you know, if you're doing those jokes, <laughs> how did I start that sentence? Anyway, get tackle, tackle. people. <laughs> Louis, Louis Tackle them, but for the right I'm reasons. Sorry. Go to go to your local open mic. Wait for someone to say a transphobic joke. Tackle the shit out of them. I will not pay your bail, yeah, especially but... if they look like Carstelia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if it's your local <laughs> open mic, they're probably not even going to have several layers of security for you to get through. Not That's going to be kinda. way easier. Yeah. yeah, you can just get. You can just walk right right up to those guys. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. Too. Deserve it. <laughs> if he had all this security like how how did this happen like like is the like because you know the wheels in my head start spinning because i'm like well now they're just they're gonna try to make it look like it was this right but what if what if this was a, a planned attack because they wanted to make it look like cancel culture is real so they hired this 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 kid to to come up and and attack dave Chappelle and like and I believe that. Like, I feel, I, I feel like that almost makes sense. Like, honestly, I don't want to be a conspiracy it's an industry. theorist. Yeah, but yeah, Com- like comedy is an industry, and there are a lot of people who I think are upset about, uh, you know, cancel culture because it threatens their industry. Right. And you know how how do things normally go when people threaten your industry? You 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 hire. Stu just to fucking like <laughs> do dumb shit to make you look like you're right. Um, I, but- I almost feel like it doesn't threaten the industry at all. And in fact, like it, I mean, it, it creates like kind of like this aggressive dichotomy of, of comics and like the type of co- like comedy that you do, but mm-hmm. like there are always going to be like when we saw like with Trump and like the harsh divide with people, there are always going to be people on, on one side going just like, yeah, he's saying stuff that he's going to tell it like it is. And that's why I like him. You know what I mean? And they're, yeah. they're going to be those people always. And also when stuff like this happens, you know, these, you get, they get press when you, when they say things that are not funny, but politically harmful or, you know, controversial, mm-hmm. they, they get plenty of attention, unfortunately. It's true. It's, I think it's they literally, get... It's literally that comic, uh, like that really well-known web co- web comic now that's like the little stick figure comedian, like, oh, I can't say anything, like holding bags of money on his Netflix special. Like, oh, my next yeah. my next Netflix special silenced. My, my next Netflix special canceled. Uh, shut down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's literally that. I mean, it's... Yeah. It's it's so tiring because it's just watching like this this parallel to the like the fucking Democrat Republican fucking bullshit yeah. Uh, yeah. false dichotomy too. Yeah, it's yeah. like I want <laughs> I don't I don't need this same sort of conflict in you know across every art form. Like can yeah these fucking assholes just relax and like tell some some fucking 
actual jokes. Go back, so yeah, go back to doing work. like references. You know, go go back to just just referencing uh, fucking uh, childhood cartoons or whatever. Like, like yeah. anything, the most insufferable like, comedy. I would prefer to, to this fucking bullshit. Well, and that's and that's the thing because I was thinking about it the other day because like in Pittsburgh, it's it's very blue collar. So why I, I there's a lot of that. There's a lot of mm-hmm. just just like dudes who go up there and complain about like women, their wives, genders, weird and confusing. Like yeah. that, that. But I wonder if there's a level of self awareness to it where they know that they're not funny. So yeah. they, they can't write a joke. So they just lean into controversial so they can get at least mm-hmm. a couple people on their side. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they might get, uh, they might get like a, an OAN. Uh, OAN. Yeah. One American news network. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. They might right. get a, a fucking show there or somebody might some fucking uh, yeah. Steve Bannon podcast network will reach out to them or some shit. That's yeah. what I think that's what offends me about it the most is like not any of the actual offensive content or whatever, but the fact that like on some level, a good percentage of this shit, it is just like a really cynical grift. Mm-hmm. Like it when you see it on like the lower tier of like not as well known comedians, it definitely feels a lot of the time like exactly what Willow said. Like, I'm not going to get a bunch of laughs. I'm not going to get, you know, a huge stand up special, but I'll probably get invited on to like, yeah, Steve Bannon or like Alex Jones. Any right. kind of reaction. They just want any reaction at all yeah. instead of like trying to talk about their goldfish and then bombing. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, it's and like, then it's like our old friend, uh, fucking Josh. Um, the fuck is that fucker? Oh, name? the ham, the human mm-hmm. ham. Yeah, the honey baked ham of a man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. We don't need to come up with it. We, we just remember no. his name is Josh, and he's a fucking insufferable yeah. ham boy. This is a deep <laughs> cut from like episode two. <laughs> but it's like I, you know, at one point I think he was actually trying to do comedy, and then when that failed, you know, it might have been that one that joke about the the vertical pussy or horizontal pussy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like that might have been the joke where he realized, oh yeah, I'm not funny, but. Right. Like, yeah. This will get shared you know. over and over again. Yeah, exactly. And then he'll get his following mm-hmm. that way by being racist and stupid. Yeah. So. And I think like it even even towards the top when you get to these like multi million dollar um, you know, household name celebrities, Dave Chappelle and like um who's that British one who did that really cringy photo shoot with like the Jesus cross microphone? Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh fuck. Oh yeah, Ricky Amazing Gervais. Off. Ricky Gervais. Oh, it was Gervais. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like right. him and yeah, Chappelle, um, Crystalia, all of these like uh I'm being friggin' canceled, Omar. guys. It's like, yeah, it's like you have a following, you have a ton of money, but you're you're aging, you are losing um losing a grip on what sparks uh audiences creatively now Mm -hmm. how do you stay relevant make people mad start start a conversation about whether you're losing your edge um make everyone talk about that in the worst uh gizmodo think pieces that you've seen for the next four years like (laughs) just keep doing that it sucks it's just it's frustrating because Chappelle is such a good writer like he's so funny (laughs) And he could write, mm-hmm. he does write great material, but it's just like, why do you have to, why do you have to do this, this kind of material? You know what I mean? Like right. at this yeah. point in your career. Yeah. Right. And, and for him, I, for him, I almost think it's, it's, it's become like a, like a, like an actual war or whatever, because yeah, I don't know. He sees himself as, as a, a victim of that. I don't know. I think for with Chappelle, I think, I think it's more complex than some of these people, but like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, the fact is, yeah, he is just telling shit jokes, uh, about the same things because he knows that it'll piss people off. Yep. And, yeah. and it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it sucks. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. humiliating and awful for everybody involved. And I, I don't know. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I watched the closer. I laughed a lot. I, I found it like I found some of the things he said endearing, but there were also moments where I was like, 
this sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel yeah. shitty about myself. <laughs> As yeah. a trans person, yeah. he's making me feel bad. Um, yeah. And then I, right. you know, the more I thought mm -hmm. about it over, you know, since then, I have moments where I think back to things in that special and it's like, it genuinely bothers me. And I know that other people were affected by this in the other way where they like, they probably found more, I don't know. I don't want to say that I, <clears throat> I'm going off on a thing. Yeah. But, and like, I've had a lot, I've had a lot of discussions about it. I've had a lot of discussions about it. And like, I've, I've heard mm -hmm. from, you know, like cis, cis people, uh, I don't remember who I was talking to, but what he was saying was just like, well, like what Chappelle did, like was, was like in a way for the greater good, because, you know, people who maybe agree with him right now, like he'd sneak in like some like humanizing trans people in a way. And like, maybe that'll like slowly get them to understand that trans people aren't, you know, weird and wrong. And I'm just like, well, I, you could go about it in a way better way. Like if people are watching Dave Chappelle, like they're going to listen yeah. to what he's saying. That's the thing is when I, when I saw that, when I watched that one and again, I, I didn't watch most of, I watched the first of those Netflix specials and I watched the last, those were the only two I watched. Mm -hmm. I didn't see sticks and stones um, or the um, fucking bird parable. Uh, I whatever couldn't it was get called. through it. Um, I probably couldn't have either because I because I get the impression that he went really hard. And then this last one was supposed to be like a a, 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 a concession of some sort, um, mm, which I right. did feel, you know, at certain points I did feel I was like, yeah, OK, so that's what he's doing. He's trying to sneak in this like I I know what I've said is is, you know, but, you know, you should you should sort of look at these people Um you know, listen to what um, the 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 trans woman that he he liked, the one Wait. trans woman he liked. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, whatever she said about wanting to be seen as a as a person living their life. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that's that's like really important to communicate. But like the 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 more time that I spend thinking about that special, the more manipulative it seems. Mm -hmm. And right. it just kind of seems like a like a get out of jail. That uh, was that was my initial and like I don't want to like relitigate the Dave Chappelle special or yeah, whatever. Sorry, we we're, we're no, going no, down no, no, whole, no, 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 sorry. And be, no, it's you're totally good. I'm I'm literally engaging with it the exact same way right now. But like <laughs> that initially was what put a really, really bad taste in my mouth about that special was like, no, see, it's okay. I found one of the good ones that I like and and look at her and you know so that means i'm good and i'm right actually mm -hmm. um and also she's dead and uh it's also my haters fault that she's dead and, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> right and so you have to take my word on what she would have felt and wanted about this discourse that i'm creating on her behalf right now like yeah. it's that sucked that sucked man he he i have a black friend the trans <laughs> community yeah I, it just yeah. it, like and it, he he's so political and I, I love a lot of his earlier work and like the mm -hmm. the conversations that he has about being a, an oppressed minority and then yeah. to see him do this shit upsets yeah. me to like no end so yeah. that's that's another that's another facet of it is like you fucking know better you absolutely yeah. know better mm -hmm. it feels well and yeah it feels like losing a a you know, a, one of your like feels like losing a general to the other side or whatever in, in mm -hmm. a war mm -hmm. uh, that is already unwinnable <laughs> and that, that fucking sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bro, I trusted you. <laughs> yeah. Like. yeah. But, and that's the thing is people are now without, you know, people don't look for context. They, 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 literally will do anything to avoid context at this point. I'm guilty of it. I love to read a funny headline and just assume that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. Even if it's something that's coming from the thing about, I thought the article that I'm, uh, that I had saved in like our notes or whatever. I thought that that was from, from like page six or whatever, which again, isn't a good source of information, but it's not the fucking New York post. I despise the New York Post. I 
but I, I find myself picking up information from their headlines just because it's blowing past me all the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. So now you get people with a voice who are acting like this because we're all, you know, people. And you get like Howie Mandel, uh, for instance, I saw <laughs> um, is saying, uh, what is he saying? Sorry. Um, I'm just going to I'm going to read it the way they wrote it because it's the New York Post and they're terrible. No laughing matter. Howie Mandel isn't looking forward to doing stand up comedy in the near future. Oh, he's well, but probably because he's like doing like two or three game shows and that, that's all he's done for the last like 20 years. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the 66 year old admitted that he's fearful for the comedy community following Will Smith slapping Chris Rock mm, at the Oscars <laughs> in March and the recent attack on Dave Chappelle at the Netflix is a joke festival on May 3rd. You know, not to comment on what happened at the Academy Awards, but I thought that that opened the floodgates. He, he said, commenting on the, Ugh. on what happened at the Academy Awards. Um, the, the, you know, the former deal or no deal uh, host told <laughs> E news daily pop, uh, on Wednesday, we're already as comedians being attacked as far as being canceled oh, for what something the fuck that you don't ever. like, something that you find offensive, something that you think is too soon. He continued, uh, and he went on. You saw what happened at the Academy Awards, and I thought that just triggers violence. Triggers violence, mm. uh, and I think this wow. is the beginning of the end for the comedy community. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> Like you, if you are in the comedy community, as you you say you still are, you know, again, like, I think the last time he put a fucking condom on his head and blew it up uh, for laughs was probably 20 years ago, at least. Um, but, and again, I, I, I don't have anything against Howie Mandel generally, but like, it's a, I... like, if you p- figure that you're some sort of pillar of the comedy community, at least get some context, fig- like, like look into it and figure out that like the guy that attacked Dave Chappelle wasn't doing so on behalf of some community that he had offended. It was just like, he was just like trying to, trying to stir up clout for his sound clap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for I his- think as Ironically enough, instead of being a beginning of the end of comedy, is a beginning of a new, funnier type of comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, sl- the 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 forced slapstick of, of, <laughs> of the uh, you know the the uh, the, the post canceled uh, comedians. Yes. The the Louis C.K. I can't wait for the hour of uh, just random uh, football players. Uh, tackling Louis C.K. <laughs> over and over and that over again. Fuck. He's still spinning in the air, and here comes another one. It's just like a video game aerial combo. <laughs> <laughs> that would be way funnier than anything that was in his, uh, you know, most recent. Uh, yeah, not well, not so special, if you know what I mean. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's actually really incredible to think about, actually, um, because most people don't know this. But if you can juggle Louis C.K. in the air for up to four <laughs> hits, you actually get an achievement for that. Mm-hmm. And then if you press right trigger, you can slam him through the wall from the air. <laughs> so it's, it's really a lot of people don't know that about comedy. <laughs> Um, yeah. And also, so Willow, you, I, I have to backtrack j- just a little bit. You said that you have nothing against Howie Mandel personally. Mm-hmm. I do because I have a, a vendetta against all game show hosts as a rule because I don't know if you guys <laughs> are aware, they have a long history of being fucking weird creep perverts. Of so course. many of them. Pat Sajak. Um, even Trebek a little bit. Oh, what did uh, Trebek do? Oh God, I he made some weird comment on to a, a girl on like the Teen Week and oh, said no. something like so young, so young. Like it, it definitely Ooh. wasn't like the worst thing. Right. Ever <laughs> yeah, but it it's it's memorable. Yeah. Um, I mean, eventually, eventually he's gonna say something weird. He was hosting that show for like. Yeah. lifetimes so <laughs> you've, gotta, you've gotta hand it to him if that's all he did that's fine but like yeah. richard dawson um 
don't know if you remember Richard Dawson from Family Feud. He wasn't he, was, he the first Family Feud guy? Yes, he was the first Family Feud guy. Um, and he first of all showed up to work drunk every day, which mm-hmm. rocks. That kicks ass. Go him. I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah, very that. mad men of him. <laughs> 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 um, but also, he had a rule where he would kiss all the women for luck. That was all his right. rule on the show. Um, and then he would like specifically pick out girls that he like really liked and they would get extra kisses. Um, what? Yeah. Yeah. Like um, on, on the mouth? <laughs> yes to both of you. Oh, <laughs> um, there were some women who would like try to just like give him their cheek to kiss and mm-hmm. he would like play that little weird game where like he would go back and forth and try to like catch him on the mouth. Oh god. Uh, yeah. Icky. No. Um, that's so grim. Bob Barker, uh Bob Barker, I don't know if you guys know about this. Bob Barker in the 70s had what he called his $100 pocket that he would have pretty little girls reach into. <laughs> <laughs> what was in the pocket? Jesus. $100. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Why did do they call him Boris the Bullet Dodger? Because <laughs> he dodges bullets. Damn, that's weird. There is the the one that is most like burned into my brain is this guy um named uh, it's like Fergie Fergie Oliver or Fergie Olver maybe um mm-hmm. but it was this weird Canadian game show I think in the 70s all of this was in the 70s by the way because like of course it was sure um it was a weird Canadian game show called Just Like Mom that was moms and little girls on the show and it was like oh. I don't remember exactly like the details of the show itself um but he like part of like his personality as the host of the show was that his whole shtick was like trying really hard to touch and kiss the little girls. <clears throat> um, sure. oh. Heck, yeah. And there are full like, and this shit aired. There are like full scenes of moms. Like you can see them on air, like specifically trying to like keep him away from their daughter. Like it's fucked. It's really oh my fucked. God. I what do is not this trust called? It's called Just Like Mom, Canadian game show from the 70s. Oh, wow. Um, Lord. It is really fucked. And so, uh, yeah, sorry to like bring everyone down with that. But no, I you're not good. <laughs> I'm, I'm like. We're having so much fun talking about <laughs> Dave Chappelle and transphobia. Dave Ch- <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Louis C.K. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. He was probably the creepiest game show host I've ever seen. Um, oh, he looks but they, they all like have like, yeah, they all have. Oh, and like, um, I can't remember who it was or what show it was, but I remember there was another game show host who like told, uh, told a contestant they had nice nipples. Um, like it's they're nice all, kid. yep. No, that was, that was Alex Trebek for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, Pat Sajak always perving on Vanna White against mm-hmm. her wishes. Like every oh, single including one. very recently, I believe yeah. there was what was it? Oh yeah, it was it was she was talking about watching the opera and she was like saying it like, Oh, this is like a quirky thing I do. I watch the opera mm-hmm. or listen to it or something. And he was like, Do you ever do that in the nude? <laughs> what? Um. And it's like <laughs> Um, and she was like, she was like, no, <laughs> what are you talking? <laughs> like this happened on the show, apparently. That's so weird. Um, um, and then uh, Drew Carey existing is creepy to me, and I don't like it. <laughs> Drew Carey is <laughs> fucking weird. I, I, I can't even specifically point out to anything that he's ever done or said, but I bad, just terrible vibes from Drew it's Carey. Just, yeah, his his general. Oh, hey, uh, you know, hey, we're oh, we're gonna oh. that that whole that whole energy is just rubs yeah. me it rubs me the wrong way for sure. Yeah, and I think uh, given the right position and circumstances, he would rub you the wrong way. <laughs> he would. Um, uh, and it's, seems it like I rub you the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. It's because it's like I loved whose line is it anyway? Loved that show. Oh yeah, um, the version. 
with with him or the uh the the british one the version with him because that's what was like on tv mm-hmm. when i was like a kid um and like oh my god it's so good even even with the new host whose name is uh sadly escaping me um really beautiful talented actress uh Mm. Aisha Tyler. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, the the version with all those guys, like it it's the one thing I can point to that improv is good actually. Yeah. That's <laughs> the only time I've ever enjoyed improv ever. Yeah, yeah. the only time at least short short form improv. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it that is very fun. The way yeah. that, that show is arranged is great. I always liked it. I always liked both versions. Yeah. Look, look at how hot Drew Carey's dead ex-wife is. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. I just how I just put her in the chat. Yeah. She was a sex therapist. So maybe the vibes that you were getting from uh, Drew Carey weren't creep vibes, but they were like sex god vibes. Because mm. I can see why... Maybe I think those it, wires would get crossed. Is oh man, guy who guy who speaks really openly about his sex life vibes okay. because that that does work both ways. That's uh-huh. he's in the sex therapist's office making headway with the hot girl, but he also <laughs> like you don't want to run into him at a bar. <laughs> but <I'm>, <laughs> um, <laughs> also, I just uh, I don't like his face. He's got beady little eyes that freak me out. Um, imagine, yeah. imagine him staring at you from a dark corner with those glasses. Have we, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have we it's, I'm, I'm getting deja vu. Did we do like on an old episode? Wasn't there, didn't we talk about how, how Drew Carey was bad and annoying? <laughs> it's on I my like mind is, a lot. There's no way. Yeah, Justine, did you, did you bring that up before? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I there's no way to know. Again, it's one of those things. I I think I've said this before on the show. I've got about seven topics in my mind that are on a rotating <laughs> wheel. Um, and one of some, them is Drew. Yeah, one of them one of them's Drew. Lunchables, and one of them's Drew Carey. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so probably you know, swords somewhere in there. Yes. Drew Carey, the the Lunchables of uh, game show hosts. <laughs> <laughs> not your first pick but you'll take it i guess because of everything else that comes with it mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it comes with a cookie <laughs> cookies just ryan styles <laughs> oh love ryan styles oh um, yeah. beautiful beautiful man um mm-hmm. so the i'm not gonna pretend like i have a good transition because i don't i'm not phil <laughs> Um, but I wanted to talk about this while I have a captive audience here. I am in a really bad position um, with my Twitter account because of a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta look. I, this is my first time actually looking at the post. I'm gonna look at it live. Oh yeah. Do you need a link get, to it? We gotta get Howie Mandel's opinion on this. Can you drop and, the screen in the chat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Give me just a sec. I'll get that over to you guys. Shit, Justine's um, getting canceled. What are you gonna do? <laughs> um, so I made the terrible mistake of finding out about a type of bird called the harpy eagle recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is terrifying looking, absolutely horrifying. I just threw uh, the link to the post in the chat. It's a scary bird and it's huge. It's gigantic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks, uh, many, many people have pointed out, it looks like like an Elder Scrolls uh, quest giver is what I said in the thread. A lot of people said it looks like a boss in Elden Ring. Um, <laughs> many people have said it looks like a man in a suit. Yes. Uh, like like a Donnie Darko bird suit or something. Um, <laughs> and one thing that I thought was important to point out that I did point out in the post, um, their talons are longer than a grizzly bear's claws over five inches and its grasp could puncture a human skull with some degree of ease. First of all, I would like my birds to be able to puncture a human skull with no degree of ease. They need to be working. <laughs> um but anyway i posted this um a few days ago four days ago now 
Um, and all I said was just like, I'm going to fucking throw up. I hate this thing. Um, <laughs> you guys may not know. I have a terrible fear of birds, all birds, especially condors or raptors or like any meat eating bird. It's fucked up. They shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, and it blew up. Uh, it got like 87,000 likes over the course of the last four days. And first of all, I'd wow. like to point out Twitter's uh, mute this thread button is not mm-hmm. working currently. Oh, no. So every single notification of the 6,400 retweets, 3,300 quote tweets, and 87,000 likes came to my phone personally with no way to stop it in the Twitter app. Um, and apparently this bird is like the national bird of like three or four countries in central South America. Um, so I have the citizens of Brazil and Panama furious with me. Well, they should get better birds. Yeah. Oh, no. Cause I said, I, I hate their stupid murder bird. Um, and for again, four days, uh, it only just slowed down this morning. Um, my, my mentions have literally just been getting yelled at in Portuguese for days, <laughs> um, to the point where I had to like add another reply. Like I meant no disrespect to the good people of Brazil and Central South America. I'm sorry that your bird is scary. I love you personally though. Like it, it is the dumbest situation I've ever found myself in. Like. It's like this weird Rube Rube Goldberg machine where point A is I have a fear of birds and point B is me apologizing to the entire population of Brazil. (laughs) (laughs) The fucking Domino's meme. Yeah. Incredible. So... I, I just I needed to get that out. I I was I was struggling very hard with that. Um, and also the thing is, as I said, I am actually legitimately scared of birds. I do find this bird terrifying. I've had to see it over and over <laughs> and over again every time it pops up in my notifications eighty thousand times oh for the past four days. So what you're saying is that you are <laughs> the only actual victim of cancel culture. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I agree. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying, and I think I should be, um, you know, I think I deserve some form of reparations from the people of Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, another group of people who are mad at me. Apparently, this bird is endangered, and apparently, at some point in the thread, I may have said something like, "I'm furious. We should eradicate this bird." Um. <sighs> Oh, and, and they took you seriously. They took me seriously that's as if what every tweet is is a serious <laughs> declaration. Yeah. As intent. if I I personally from from Southern Nevada, <laughs> me and my 1800 <laughs> Twitter followers are going to load up with shotguns, take the first flight down to Rio de Janeiro and start hunting and taking out every single harpy eagle. Like what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? Um and there were even people like, well, actually, um, even if you were joking, um, calls for eradication of a species, I, I just simply don't think it's funny. Cool, then. I don't know, man. Then, well, then. then you really need to not be on Twitter, babe. <laughs> like, come on. Like, you, you can't. If, you, if that's your bar. <laughs> I'm just imagining the guy who, like, wasn't going to hurt one of these birds. And then he saw my post and is like, oh, well. I have to. I don't have Anything any choice for you, my queen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. We're it's, rolling out. That'll be the same guy who sent me a dollar on Venmo the day that I posted a picture of my butt. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's his two tiers of action. Um, One dollar Venmo transfer, um, eradicating an avian species. That's <laughs> he's got two modes, and both are ready to go. Proud of you, Justine. <laughs> Thank you. Now the horror can end uh, because I'm sure every all of these people listen to the podcast and. Um, <laughs> I think you've you can give them your word, right? That that you're we're not actually going to uh, organize a, a mass. 
uh, if, extinction event. <laughs> if everybody agrees to stop retweeting the fucking post, <laughs> I will swear on my life and my firstborn that I will never harm a feather on this fucking bird's head. These terrifying murder birds. Yeah. Yeah. But if this thing gets any more traction on this app, I'm going to fucking end them <laughs> all. <laughs> I wonder what it tastes like. That is so much meat. Yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> I it's got to be pretty... real tough though, right? Because they look so fucking strong. Yeah. I have a pretty good sized smoker in my backyard. <laughs> I bet I could like, you know, low and slow, you know, like, 18 hours overnight or something. I bet I can make something happen. Careful. Peter's Peter's going to show up and shoot your knees off. <laughs> on on their Rude. way to the puppy killing factory that they yeah, run. right. <laughs> <laughs> I I love the idea um this has been a running joke with me for years now is that PETA just doesn't like it when you kill animals cuz that's one less animal for them to kill. <laughs> 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 I love all their animal porn that they've been producing now. All the furry oh, stuff. Absolutely. I'm oh, gonna good. need you to elaborate. <laughs> oh, you oh, haven't seen haven't, you you've never I'm seen so, the I'm so um, behind lately. Uh the the milk one. Uh well yeah. there's I, there's gotta be more than one milk oh, one. Is that the one with the cows that are like with the titties? What if you were getting milked or whatever? Yeah. Or what if you were getting stuffed? It's like a guy that uh-huh. looks like uh, like one of the Koch brothers or something, it, it, like a cartoon of this like old bald guy getting. Oh, I see it. It it's like in the Archer cartoon style, yeah. <laughs> That's really unsettling. Yeah. I'm gonna because I don't respect PETA, I am gonna steal this and just make it our episode art with no notes, like perfect <laughs> image, no changes. Yep. Um, there's also it seems to be one that looks like Mr. Peanut Butter from Bojack Horseman, um, <laughs> leading around a woman on a pink satin leash, and it just says, What if the roles were reversed? And like this is that that's porn. That's like that's hot. Yeah. <laughs> um no, that's really fucked up. That's really funny. God damn it, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Looks Great. weird, right? And kind of sexy. <laughs> are you into that? I won't say anything if you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, this it's is just so horny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, I want them uh, to put out another one of these like weirdly sexual animal on human drawings. And it's just like, JK. Unless <laughs> I, I Jesus Christ. Do you remember when they made like a it was like a weird um Pokemon game? Um because no. so they made a, a like a a parody of Pokemon where like it was like dog fighting with Pokemon and it was like very graphic with like blood and mm-hmm. death. Um because their issue was that the game Pokemon for children was again tantamount to dogfighting and that you were exposing and normalizing How is that? and cruelty the, to children. They they made what the, they're <laughs> saying that the game <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like it's just like this and so we've made this to show what it's like which shouldn't exist. <laughs> That oh, they you want to start a dog fighting ring. You're exposing children to what they can be doing right now instead of yeah. playing pocket monsters. They called yeah. it Pokemon Black and Blue. The website is still up from years ago. I'm sending it in, <laughs> in the great. recording chat here. Oh Games.eta.org. It's, so it's still there. That's it incredible. It is still there. This was like years ago. I remember this. Jesus Christ. Wait, this is you're right, it's PETA. This is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, thank you for this. I'm gonna play all night. Oh boy. I bet the controls are shit. Oh god, the volume is so loud. 
<laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna be enjoying this all night long. Um, <laughs> you know, because be, you know because Pokemon has put it in our heads that we need to uh, do things like this, and now we we need to. <laughs> I love that they <laughs> exposure they, therapy. They mm -hmm. like they created an issue, um, like a desire that people have, and then we're like, "Fine, well, we'll cater to that desire and we'll show you." <laughs> well, it's it's like the fucking um, it's like you know, uh, the 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 extra like the the far right uh, fundamentalist Christian uh, people who invent these insane. Uh, fucking transphobic arguments and stuff and, and, and homophobic arguments. And it's just like, well, you know, if we insist the slippery slope is there, I guess we've got to actually, uh, you know, see it through to the end just to show people that it could happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like, absolutely insane. You've invented all of these fears. It's, I, I don't understand. Um, like the thought process behind it. PETA is one of the most insane organizations. Um, and it's funny. I remember one very silly thing. I remember them doing when I was in like middle and high school, they created um, like a cooler, hipper, younger version of PETA. Um, and it's called Pete. Uh, part. <laughs> Pete. It was, I think it was they literally are so lazy. They just called it like PETA two or something. Mm -hmm. um, but part I remember of it was that. that you're right. Yeah, I do remember that. They would that, send yeah. you. They would send <laughs> you free stickers. <laughs> they would send you free stickers. And one of the main things that I remember was that if you went to their cool hip teen PETA two website, they had free banners that you could put on your MySpace page. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I just realized instead of, um, making PETA sound lame, I just made myself sound old. So I didn't, <laughs> it's at all. Sorry. Never mind. <laughs> By acknowledging the existence of MySpace. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Oh, MySpace. I miss it a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I miss when animal rights weren't commodified. Yeah. I miss... I miss a lot of things. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I miss I miss the Shrek green ketchup. <laughs> oh, me too. All mm -hmm. the yeah, they had they had weird foods back then. I miss I miss mm -hmm. them. Yeah, those we Doritos to, America... that were shaped like a fucking oh the, the, the puffy Doritos the pu yeah the, the the puffed out yeah the three D thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, America to be great again needs to get back on its weird food bag. That's mm -hmm. what we need mm -hmm. to be striving for. Stop, uh, stop trying to repeal um, safe access to health services. Start making chips in weirder shapes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll buy weird Go shit for me. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're doing pretty. Uh, the the Cheetos Mountain Dew or whatever. What? True. I think they've got they've gone past acceptably weird into heinously weird. Yeah, uh, Justine, you most mostly drinks, mostly drinks. Yeah, like the like the Arby's vodka and stuff or whatever yeah. that was. Horrendous yeah. hell world. Things that has should anyone, not be fused. Has anyone gotten their hands on the Arby's vodka at all? No, I, I tried really hard immediately afterwards to find it locally, and I couldn't. Well, I, I'm going to see if I can't order it. Also, uh, the Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew. I still need to try that just because. Yeah. Oh, I did hear about that, actually. But I don't I don't like uh, Mountain Dew, unfortunately. Mm. You're a gamer. You vague. <laughs> I was going to say like Mountain Dew. I don't like soda. I don't like carbonation. I Justine, what do you use for game fuel? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Um, I use... Margaritas in a can. <laughs> Margaritas in a can, and also in my fridge, I have a big, silly little mason jar filled with cold brew coffee that I mix with like one to one ratio of cinnamon toast crunch coffee creamer. Hell oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> you make your own too? Yeah. I make yeah, it in, yeah. in a huge, like, it's like a two gallon mason jar, and yeah, it just sits too. over it. Yeah, it yeah, does yeah. it have a little spout on it? 
Yeah, and it's got the it's got yeah. the infuser thingy in it. It's great. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. It rocks. Um, I'm actually having one of those right now. <laughs> nice. Well, we've all got to get we've all got to get making cold brew at home and uh, stop stop uh, can- canceling comedy. <laughs> Uh, save Justine from the birds <laughs> and Brazil. Save Justine, yeah. <laughs> and you know, uh, uh, let's try to uh, do something about this Supreme Court. Oh, speaking of that, before we sign off, I have one little thing I want to throw out there. Um, so. If you guys listen to the show, you may or may not know, I have a shop, uh, kielbasagarage.com. Um, I just sell my silly little t-shirts and my silly little, uh, you know, swim wear and jewelry and stickers and mugs and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the rest of the month of May, any order that you place um, at the shop, 50% of the total profit is going to get donated uh, to an organization called the Midwest Access Fund. Um, nice. They, yeah, they help uh, Midwestern <coughs> Midwestern patients get access to abortion services safely um, and uh, affordably wherever they can. Um, if you do purchase anything from now between the end of May, I will... Uh, after your order payment processes, I will send you an email with a little donation receipt so you can see exactly how much got donated. Um, so yeah, that is going on. That applies to every every order. doesn't matter what you buy, how little, how much. Um, that's kielbossgarage.com. Uh, yeah, if you do that, thank you. If not, um, you can also just uh, donate to Midwest Access Coalition um, or any local abortion coalition directly. Um, please do that. And that's yes. my, that's my piece. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By Justine's shit. Do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do it anyway. Do it anyway, but especially do it now. Yeah. Um, oh, we yeah. love it. Um, oh, we yeah. love to see, yeah, we love to see people in, uh, Kilbasa Garage stuff. Um, yeah. And I mean this, um, <clears throat> yeah. So do, do what you fucking can. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> which Sometimes it feels like you can't really do much at all. Um, and, and, you know, I, we, we understand that. Um, yep. I kind of think we all kind of feel like that at the moment. Um, but Love I, you all. Tack all your local comedians. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> do that. Um, thanks to, thanks to Jay Pupa, as always, for the theme song. <laughs> um, look, look for us on the, the places. We yeah. love you. Bye. You're all right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we'll see. Bye. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you.